Hey there and welcome back. So we talked about CICD and now we need to start creating this workflow and we're going to do this in uh, GitHub Actions that will allow us to create these workflows so that we can run our tests automatically and if they pass then it's going to deploy our REST API to Heroku. Right, so um, we can see that if we click on this Actions tab here then we have way of doing many different workflows, both for Node.js, for uh, various uh, deployment services and also programming languages. So there are many, many different options in GitHub Actions to do this. Uh, but I'm going to do this in my code here so we can see that we have our, our project. And uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new folder. So we're going to do github.github and in there we will make a new folder called workflows. So this directory is going to hold our configuration file for GitHub Actions that will tell GitHub what to do whenever we push some code to GitHub. So we create a new file called main YAML right here and in this file I will write the instructions for GitHub. So the first setting is that we need to have a name. Let's just call this node.js CI CD could be. Then we need to provide an event when it's going to do this uh, testing and deployment. And we're going to say that whenever we push something to this branch, we, we can actually specify multiple branches, but I just have a main branch. If we go to our repository, we can see that we got the main branch. So whenever I push some new code to GitHub, I want GitHub to run my test automatically. And if they pass, I want it to deploy it to Heroku. So on push on this on this branch, I would like to run uh, one or more jobs. So I specify jobs. And the first job I would like to have is called test. And the test uh, for the test, I also need to specify a name for that. Let's just call this test. I need to specify the architecture that is going to run on. So Ubuntu latest. And then I can specify a strategy. And because we can see that this is running on Node version 14 and we have NPM as well. So I would like to specify that I want to uh, perform these tests on uh, one or more Node versions. So I can specify, let's just take in the beginning, let's take 14 because I'm running 14 for this, but I could specify multiple versions. I could specify 10 like this. And then GitHub Actions would uh, automatically run the tests on several environments. So we can specify 14x here in the beginning. So that was the node version. Then I need to specify a couple of tests. And first I need to specify a name. Let's just specify, whoop, I'll specify a checkout because I want, first I want GitHub to check out my code. Then I have to specify a action, a predefined actions, uh, and this is called checkout version two. And this basically means that uh, we have predefined actions that uh, are made in uh, GitHub that will allow us to uh, to check out this repository. This is uh, that is what it means that it's going to check out the repository. And I need to do this with with a fetch depth of zero. So I get the entire repository. Then I need to Then I need to also set the node versions up here. I need to install the node versions and set them up. So I will go and call this use node, oops, node.js. And then I can specify, because it's going to, now I only have one node version, but if I had multiple, it would uh, iterate through 
each uh, node version and uh, set them up and then ultimately do the test for each node version. So I can specify my matrix here that I have, uh, oh, I made just a small mistake, I need to make a matrix. So we specify the strategy and matrix and then the node version because then I can uh, type matrix in here and node version. So then it's going to take node version 14 and it's going to, oops. Then it is going to, let's see here, then it's going to use another predefined action called setup node, and that should also be version two. So it's going to set up this particular node version that I uh, have specified in my matrix. And then it's going to do this with this node version. And we just copy the code up here, whoop. Because this was just a name. This was just a name for our step. And this is the actual command or the code that is going to tell GitHub that I want to set up node with this version. Right, so the next, the next step is called npm install build and test. So in this step, we're going to install the node or all the dependencies that is uh, required for it to work. And we're going to build the project and we're going to test it. So it's going to run the test uh, in this step. So in here, we're going to run a couple of commands and we will run npm install npm test. So it's going to install all the dependencies because we can see that for our tests, we need these dependencies and we need also some dev dependencies uh, that includes Maka and Chai in order for the test to work. So we're going to install all the dependencies and we're going to run the test afterwards. So one important thing to notice is that when we run the test manually, we would like to do this on a test database. We don't want this to happen on the production database. So we need somehow to specify to GitHub that it shouldn't use another database, just like we did with our test. Because in our test, we can see here when we do our workflow, or in the setup, I think it is, we run node env test. And this will tell uh, the test environment that it should use another database, another test database that is specified in the env file. And uh, we need somehow to tell GitHub that uh, it should set the env variable because we usually we don't commit the env files to the GitHub repo. One way we can do this is that we also have GitHub Actions have an env setting here where we can create environment variables that's going to map to the env and in here we can specify the database host that we're using in the test. So if we specify database host, and then we, uh, let's just do like this. And in here we can specify uh, also a secret that we need to create. Okay, so I'm providing a database host and then I'm setting this to the value of my secret DB host. So in GitHub, if we go to the settings and scroll a little bit down, we have an area called secrets. And the secrets is meant for keeping uh, environment variables that are encrypted. So that could be database connection strings uh, and other information that should be kept confidential. Right, so we can create a new repository secret and we can call this db host. And in here, we paste the path of our database host, the database connection string. So now I've made an env uh, variable that is going to map exactly to my .env file. And then we click uh, Add Secret, and then we can see we have this database host here. So if we head back to our uh, main.yaml file, we can see that we have this database host maps uh, nicely to the db host here 
and we just type secrets and then dot and then the name of the environment uh, secret. Then we also need to remember that besides the DB host, we also had a couple of other environment variables. We also had a variable called token secret that we're using uh, to generate the tokens. So in the auth, we are using token secret and also uh, a variable to specify when the JSON web token will expire. So we need to provide a couple of more uh, environment variables. So I'm just going to copy this DB host here and then we will set it up. So the first is going to be token secret and then JVT expires in. And let's just copy it over here so it will be the same. And then we need to create these variables in GitHub Actions as well. So we just create a new repository secret called token secret. This could be anything that you specify. So um, could be whatever you specify here, just a number or whatever. Probably something more secure than that. And then we need to specify also the JVT expires in. And we can say 24 hours before it will expire. All right, so we got these repository secrets now that our API needs in order to work. And it also needs them in order for us to run the test because some of our tests will test if we can actually create a, a user or log in a user, get a JSON web, to, web token and create a product. All right, so we have set all this up here now. And it is time to try to commit this. So we basically start a terminal here. And we can see that if we do git status, we have modified uh, package JSON. Also, GitHub was uh, created. So let's just add this. So we're going to add workflow file here. And then we push everything to our uh, GitHub repository. And then we can see if we head over to our code, we have um, created the workflow file. And if we head back to actions, we can see that GitHub has detected that we created a new workflow. It has queued our workflow. It's just testing it right now. And if we didn't have any errors in our script, let's see what happens. We can actually click on the, on the workflow and then we can see that we actually have an error. Then we can click on the, on the matrix test here Okay, so we can see that we get an error here that it says timeout of 2000 milliseconds exceeded. And it's probably because our test is taking, we can see that the first test failed and the rest of them actually passed. So it might take some time to uh, connect to the database and also to launch the test. So if we go to our mocker file here, mocker RC JSON, we can see that we have a timeout of 2000 uh, millisecond. And if we increase this to just, let's just put this to, uh, to 5000. Let's see this. And then if we commit again, uh, let's just see here, change test timeout. And then we push again to our repository. And uh, let's go back here and then we can see that right away. GitHub will recognize that we uh, committed some code to um, to the repository and it will 
queue it and start to run the jobs. And we can click on it. So now it's testing version 14, setting up the job. So now we can see that uh, it's just running some post checkout here. Let's see if we click on the npm install, build and test that it is running on port 4000, connected to, uh, successfully to MongoDB, and it has done all the tests. And we can see actually that the test uh, completed in just under three seconds um, due to some connection thing, I think. Uh, and But they all passed, so that is really nice. So in the next video, we will start to build on this and create the next step where we can uh, create continuous delivery where we can deploy it to Heroku if our tests are passing and if they fail then we don't deploy it because we don't want to have code that has failed tests uh, that will be deployed. Okay so uh, hope you make this work and uh, have fun with this. Bye bye.